Last Wednesday, the Federal Reserve enacted its first interest rate cut since the beginning of the pandemic. During the Fed meeting, they decided to go with the larger 50 basis point cut. In the days leading up to the meeting, people were speculating if they'd either go with a 50 or a 25 point cut. The reason they went a little more aggressive was to head off a slowdown in the labor market. With inflation softening and concerns about a possible recession, Jerome Powell explained that they thought it was a good idea to reduce rates as much as they did in the hopes of achieving a soft landing for the economy. While it's still to be determined if they do achieve a soft landing, the fact is that lowering interest rates does have a number of benefits for the economy and thus the stock market. It's well documented that interest rates and the stock market have an inverse relationship with each other. When rates get cut, then the stock market usually performs better. When interest rates go up, then the performance of stocks usually falls. The main reason for this is because when rates go up, borrowing money becomes more expensive for companies. This slows down economic growth and share prices usually fall. When rates get cut, then borrowing becomes cheaper and growth becomes easier. At the same time, if there isn't a soft landing and a recession seems more imminent, then stocks can still fall after a rate cut. But the effects of rate cuts will still have widespread effects on the market, particularly for dividend-paying investments. So in this Patreon-requested video, we'll take a look at various dividend-paying investments and determine what we can expect from the Fed lowering interest rates. We'll start by talking about just the general benefits for all companies. As I mentioned in the beginning, borrowing does become cheaper. This allows companies to take out debt at a much cheaper rate to build things like more factories, upgrade their infrastructure, and even finance acquisitions of other companies. On top of that, any company that has floating rate debt will also save money. These things also result in increased hiring, which further benefits companies and the economy. So those are just some of the general benefits that come from interest rate cuts, which benefit everything from consumer staples to tobacco companies. But some dividend-paying sectors benefit greater than others from rate cuts. First, companies heavily involved in real estate, including equity and mortgage REITs, and also ETFs and closed-end funds that hold these investments, see better operating environments. These companies own and operate income-producing real estate, or they invest in mortgage-related assets. Their stocks always fall in share price whenever we see interest rates rise because by nature, they use a lot of debt. They borrow large sums of money to do things like grow their property portfolios, either through buying properties or acquiring other REITs. As a result, these corporations will take on a lot of debt if they want to grow their portfolios or if they need to renovate or upgrade their existing properties. We've been seeing some REITs issue new shares of their stock in order to fund this so they don't have to pay higher interest rates on debt. But this also negatively impacts their stock share price. When rates get cut, they can expect faster growth if they have the capability to. Specifically with mortgage REITs, they become more profitable when interest rates get cut because they now have a greater profit margin. Another sector that sees better conditions in general are financial stocks. This would include everything from banks, private lenders, and business development companies. When rates go down, people and businesses are going to be more eager to borrow money now that it's cheaper. These kinds of businesses will have greater pools of applicants and they can choose only the safest borrowers out there. For business development companies that provide floating rate debt, it could lead to lower interest income on their investments. But on the flip side, again, they'll have a greater number of applicants wanting to borrow money and they can go with only the safest borrowers. It should also provide some relief for the businesses that are struggling to pay back the BDC or whatever company they're borrowing money from. We should hopefully see non-accruals go down, which are the investments that a BDC or a financial company holds that aren't earning interest due to distress of the borrower. So unlike REITs, I think it's unlikely that we'll see a large amount of growth in the BDC sector. But hopefully it will lead to safer portfolios for these investments. Next, I'll talk about funds that hold debt, specifically ETFs and closed-end funds that hold various types of corporate debt. It's well known that when interest rates rise, investors tend to lose interest in these kind of debt investments. So bonds and other fixed assets tend to go down in value when rates increase. When rates get cut, then investors do become more interested in these kinds of fixed assets again. For example, a lot of the PIMCO funds hold these types of fixed income investments, such as emerging market bonds, commercial MBSs, agency mortgages, and just various other types of corporate debt. But funds that hold floating rate debt won't go up in share price, they'll actually go down. The reason for this is because the interest on that debt will fall. So floating rate debt ETFs and closed-end funds will be one of the few dividend investments that don't see a better environment for increasing their dividends, but they'll actually cut them to correspond with the federal funds rate going down. You will have to check what's inside of each closed-end fund to determine what they hold, but a lot of the funds by PIMCO should benefit from these rate cuts. Naveen is another popular CEF provider that'll likely see better gains ahead. Another group that'll benefit will be any company whose main product or service revolves around large infrastructure. 
This would include energy and utility companies, such as electrical companies, green energy companies, pipeline and oil transportation businesses, and etc. It will also include companies that own cell towers and internet provider stocks. As you can imagine, all of these energy and utility companies own some pretty expensive assets. With higher interest rates, these companies aren't in much of a hurry to expand or upgrade their infrastructure. Any advancements that could be made are delayed until the company is in a better position financially or until moments like now when borrowing becomes much cheaper. Let's look at how oil prices are affected. Not only does it impact energy stocks, but oil prices impact practically every single sector. If a company sells a product, then oil is used to a certain degree, either to manufacture the product itself or to transport it while it's being made or after it was made. If a service company requires its workforce to travel, that's another way oil prices impact what they sell. According to research, interest rates can have an impact on oil prices, but the relationship isn't as strong as other sectors. There's a lot of other more important factors that come into play that determine what the price of oil is going to be besides increases or decreases in interest rates. According to Investopedia, one of the basic theories stipulates that increasing interest rates raise consumers' and manufacturers' costs, which reduces the amount of time and money people spend driving. Fewer people on the road translates to less demand for oil, which can cause oil prices to drop. In this instance, we'd call this an inverse correlation. By the same theory, when interest rates drop, consumers and companies are able to borrow and spend money more freely, which drives up demand for oil. The greater the usage of oil, the more consumers bid up the price. So basically, the relationship isn't that strong when it comes to oil prices and interest rates. But besides that, things are looking better for dividend investors. However, at the same time though, despite the fact that there's so many reasons to be optimistic as a dividend investor, there are risks that could derail things. People are becoming more concerned about the possibility of a recession, which happens sometimes when rates get cut. And it's not that the interest rate cuts themselves start recessions. The feds will cut interest rates when growth is less optimistic. And sometimes a cut can be too little too late in some instances. But if the market is worried about this happening, we might not see a lot of growth in share prices for a time. Right now the Fed is attempting to achieve a soft landing, and at this point all we can do is wait and see if they'll achieve this. It'll take a few months to really start seeing the effects of interest rate cuts. According to news that just came out last Thursday, the Federal Reserve isn't yet done with cutting rates this year. They announced their intention to lower rates again later this year by potentially another 50 basis points. If they do go through with this plan, then this could open up even more growth prospects. But with that being said, that's going to conclude today's video. If you'd like to connect and also see what's inside my own personal dividend portfolio, then feel free to check me out over on our Patreon, where you'll receive updates and be able to talk to me and other higher yielding dividend and income investors. But with that being said, thank you all so much for watching today's video, and until next time, take care.